Have you ever caught yourself thinking about your life and wondering what the point or purpose of it is? Every day can seem like an endless cycle of motion and activity. Like so many stitches in time, in and out, in and out, there never seems to be enough. We feed a constant hunger. We are caught in an endless search for happiness. As Christians, we know, if we think about it, that we are living in the meantime. The time between the first coming of Christ 2,000 years ago and the second promised return of Christ someday in the future is what we call the meantime. In today's program, we meet some interesting people whose lives and work revolve around this idea of living in the meantime. They are so aware of it that they follow what is called a liturgical calendar. As far as days, weeks, and months go, the liturgical calendar resembles any other calendar. The big difference is its focus, which is the spiritual message contained each day within the liturgy. Liturgy is the official public worship of the church. For over 2,000 years in the Roman Catholic tradition, the liturgy of the Mass has been celebrated daily throughout the world. The creative use of color, vestments, ritual, dance, music, art, and environment have kept the promise of Christ alive and meaningful throughout the years. Celebration is a big aspect of liturgy, but liturgy doesn't just happen. There is a great deal of preliminary planning that is involved with it. Today's program will take you behind the scenes to meet our sisters in the Liturgical Fabric Arts Department. Good afternoon. School Sisters of Notre Dame? Yes. If I could speak with Sister Rita Marine Dimecki, please. Liturgical Fabric Arts, Sister Rita Maureen. Father Joe Welchmar at St. James in Potosi, Missouri. Hello, Father. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm calling to follow up on the order that we placed for the parish. A phone call such as this usually gets the ball rolling in the liturgical fabric arts. The sisters who work in the liturgical fabric arts are busy every day making the liturgical calendar come alive for people in their worship. How they do it keeps the meaning of the season real and the purpose of our waiting more joyful in this mean time of life. Needlework was always something emphasized by our founders, Mother Teresa, and also by Mother Caroline, who brought the sisters to America. And um, wherever they went, they emphasized needlework. And when the sisters first bought the property here at Ripa, uh, they lived at Grandview, the original house, and the sisters supported themselves by teaching needlework to women in the area. And then when the mother house was built, the ecclesiastical department was established. Up to 1983, it was called the ecclesiastical department, and that's the earliest department in our mother house. It's the oldest one in the mother house. The sisters were well-versed in needlework. Many of the sisters coming from Germany were experts in needlework. Many of us have retired from the classroom, but we enjoy sewing. Sewing is very relaxing for me. I enjoy sewing, and I enjoy seeing the fruit of my labors. I like to see what I, after it's finished. The atmosphere, I think, is very relaxing in our department. We all get along well together. Sister, I think this is finished. Oh, how lovely. Thank you very much. I've been the coordinator of Liturgical Fabric Arts since uh, 1996, and uh, 
That entails being the coordinator of everything that's going on in our department, uh, the business managing part, the budgeting, the financial report. I talk to the clients, some people phone orders in, and some people uh, come and negotiate about different things they like to, to order. And so it involves a lot of organizing all the way through, seeing it from the beginning to the end. Many times, uh, just ordinary parishioners call and order things like gifts for the priest. I do much of the cutting of the chasubles and, and the bigger items. Some of the sisters cut the collars and the understoles. What I like about liturgical fabric arts is it's a service to the church, and not only to our Catholic church, but other various Christian denominations. Every now and then I hear, oh, I didn't realize you were here. I didn't realize you did all these things for the church. This is another chasuble for you to do, just like the one you did in green. And this collar is for this chasuble. That's correct. And you want a 3 8 inch hem. Yes, it's very good. And whenever you get it ready, that's fine. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. I'm the main designer for Liturgical Fabric Arts. I design the vestments and banners. And I've been involved with LFA since I came back from Africa, 1983. I taught art and English and religion in Sierra Leone. I like working in Liturgical Fabric Arts because I think there's a great need. It's a ministry that fills a great need in the parishes. Blessed Teresa Gerhardinger and Mother Caroline were both involved in making vestments for churches. So what we do is actually an extension of their original work. But I think it touches too on our contemporary charism. Our ministry is also involved directly with Eucharist. We say Eucharist is the center of our lives. Our ministry is directly involved with that. Many times when we send, we send packages out, we put, I put a little note in there that this garment was made in the spirit of prayer and blessing for you and for the people you serve by the School Sisters of Notre Dame in liturgical fabric arts. 